Welcome back to the May Highlights for the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm sitting here and I'm reading the guests that are highlighted in this podcast. And I know all these people in some capacity. I've connected with them on a professional level, uh, some on a personal level, obviously some in both. And it's really amazing to look at this list of people that have created really amazing things, whether it's podcasts, written books, led incredible initiatives in their school. And it made me think of one of my favorite quotes. And it's from Thomas Friedman, and I'm paraphrasing. He says, the world doesn't care what you know. The world only cares about what you can do with what you know, and it doesn't care how you learned it. And what I love about each one of these guests is that when they're talking, they're talking about things they've created with what they know, what they've seen other people doing, what they've learned both in and out of education to create incredible opportunities, not only for the people they serve, but for themselves. And I think sometimes we feel bad that we're selfish, that we want to create great opportunities for ourselves. But I think it's it's a really good thing, right? When we serve ourselves, it's easier to lift other people. And they've done that incredibly well. The other thing that I've talked about a lot is the opportunity I have to do this podcast and just to listen, just to sit and just be present and hear these incredible conversations. But I think for me, having that time to listen teaches me a lot. But what I do with it creates something really special. And it's been just a really amazing opportunity to connect with all these people. And I want to hear what you're learning, what you're, what's sticking with you, what's resonating. So as I've done in the past months, I'd love to hear from one of the people that you're listening to in this highlight video, what's something that resonated with you and why. And if you are listening on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, wherever, uh, go over to YouTube and actually check out um, the, the video and just highlight one of the, the speakers from today and what, you, what resonated with you. And one of the commenters will actually have an opportunity to win either a, a signed copy of the Innovator's Mindset or Innovate at the Box uh, to, to read and to share or maybe to gift to someone else. Because I think as these people I've connected with uh, this past month, have reminded me what we do with what we know is really incredible. And all of these people are doing amazing things in different capacities in their lives. And I know you're all, all of you listening. I appreciate you for taking this time to spend not only with me, but these incredible people. Thanks for listening this week's episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. You know what? Sometimes you got to lead with questions, right. right? Like it's so important not to just jump to the exact situation, but lead with questions to say, okay, let me dig a little deeper. Okay. What's going on? Why is it going on? Um, what can you tell me more about the situation? So really and truly it's, it's so important. And one of the things that I led with, one of the things that I've realized is just, we've got to be able as leaders to say, let me take a step. Let mm -hmm. me take a moment mm -hmm. and let me try and to dig a little deeper without, I know we have protocols and we have processes that we need to follow, but abort those to mm -hmm. see the human side of someone else as you are revealing your human side and really lead with questions, lead with understanding before you just drop the hammer. So, okay. There, I'm connecting this to something that I'm feeling uh, is that is like, should be how we treat each other on social media. That is like a really big thing for me. And sure. I've had, and I've had, I've had this happen to me and I've, I, I will tell, I will tell people I've also been this person, right? If I see something I don't agree with or something that bothers me, and it could be something like I'm feeling that day, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm already in a bad mood. So like anything I'm like ready to be attacked. And I've, I've seen this a lot more. Is that like, oh, you are saying all teachers are horrible. And I've, that's not been, you know, happened to me, but I've seen people get that. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah. that's like pretty presumptive, right? Or like, yeah. um, I remember someone said to me, like, you just share this for likes and clicks and just to sell books and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, first of all, I am an author, right? Like, so just kind of need to sell some books. Like that, like is that's part of my work. But how do you, how do you actually know my intent? Like, how do you know what, like, do you just, you, you, do you actually, like, I don't even know what's going on in my own head sometimes, right? So like, you know, in it, I mm -hmm. doubt it. And one of the things I always talk about is that sometimes when we get frustrated with how we connect with people online, just exactly what you said, 
just step back and ask a question. Maybe you're, mm-hmm. maybe you're just misreading something. Cause it could be, yeah. and if they say like, Hey, like I actually, uh, I, this, I do think teachers are bad then, then have at it. Right. Then if that's <laughs> what you think, then if that's what they say, then yeah. Okay. You were right. And now you can push back. But I think a lot of times we make those assumptions and that, that causes more issues long-term, right? Cause especially when we, I think when you're talking about that from the viewpoint of an administrator, it, let's say you had that conversation with a parent and you just assume attack them. What is that parent mm-hmm. going to do? They're going to talk to all these other parents who say like, yes. yeah, it means this way. Whereas the same thing online, someone attacks me for something and I'm thinking, Hey, look, I can mute you. I might not pay attention to you, but all these other people who want to dip their toe in are not dipping their toe in. Cause they saw it and they're like, I don't want to be that person. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I, I, we don't realize that we a lot of times come with assumptions when we see things and hear things and the way in which we do process, especially in school building process and procedures. We go in classrooms, we assume that instruction mm-hmm. is supposed to look like this. We assume that students are supposed to act this way. But a lot of times we've got to kind of be aware of our own assumptions and start to question and if we begin to start with questions we begin to make a connection we begin to build understanding and now we can change those assumptions and change our thinking to kind of not necessarily fit but more Mm. so accommodate the individuals around us yeah and it's the it's the covey seek first to understand before being understood right it's like i i love the covey stuff i've always resonated with it because it it feels like common sense but it also you know it's kind of like frames it our job is to empower kids to live life on their own terms. Right. Right. Because your pathway and my pathway don't have to be the same. And mm-hmm. we don't walk into the room naturally with the same strengths. But I need to build a community in that classroom where your strengths are valued. Right. And if it's a struggle to find out what those are, that we do that work. Um, and that we're in a, a community where I can say, yeah, I can rely on you because you as a teammate, as a mm-hmm. classmate in this space might be really good at this, but my pathway may be to go off and do this. And maybe I'm a kid who's going on to college and that's great, but maybe I'm not. And that's great too. But what, as long as during that time in school, we're creating that moment to say, what is it? And giving kids multiple opportunities to explore and figure that out. You know, when you look at the national graduation rates from right. college and you look at the number of employers who are saying, I just need people who can stick with something. Right. I need people who can um, communicate and collaborate and work with each other well. Those are those skills that we can build in schools, I think, deeper that actually help a learner say, OK, at 17 or 18, maybe I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we should have some coursework in schools that are entrepreneurial, that teach students about how to run a business, how to do those kinds of things. And we've been doing some of that work in West Dallas for a while now. And you're watching learners start to say, oh, right. that could be my pathway. Sweet. Watch me go then. Watch me take off. And I wouldn't have known that was my pathway if you didn't give me the opportunity to run a coffee cart at a right. school event or to be a student who decided to start a t-shirt business. Now I'm saying, oh, wait, maybe that's more of what I want to do when I leave school. And mm-hmm. so also for teachers, it's the same thing. You know, we all come into a school setting with different strengths and we co-teach in most of our classrooms, whether it's two regular ed teachers, a regular ed teacher and a reading specialist, a regular ed teacher and a social worker, a regular ed teacher and a special ed teacher, whatever the makeup of that um, classroom might be, but we co-teach in most of our settings because it's such a powerful opportunity Mm. to have somebody right there in the space with you trying to navigate what's next and how do we kind of divide and conquer to help the students who are still trying to figure out where their place is and what their strengths are and help the ones who already know to run with that and thrive with it. And I, I would want to be an expert learner and Katie Novak will be, if she's listening, would be so excited about, you know, hearing that, like really like try to understand learning, but that's a whole process. But when you're, and you, you mentioned earlier and we kind of lost it because we had a little uh, connection issue. Um, those spaces when, when I do those keynotes, when, you know, I, I love sharing ideas, but I'm like open to the pushback after. And it's, it's kind of like, it really sharpens um, you know, kind of what I'm thinking. And I, I'll tell you, so I've done a very similar keynote, you know, many, many times. And I know you've seen it more than once. And I always try to tweak and things like that. I could go through every element of my, of a keynote that I've done 
you know, a hundred times over and say, Hey, I remember talking about this and this person challenged me in Wisconsin. And so I changed it because that, that made sense on how they rephrased it. And I remember here I was in, you know, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and somebody said this to me and that made me think different about that. And so like, it's like everything that I share, I feel has like little remnants of conversations that I've had over time that have made me better. Right. And I think, for me, it's not about me being better than someone. It's about me be becoming better at what I do. And that means kind of tapping into others. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you speak to that, you know, the keynotes have a great purpose of energizing and starting mm-hmm. people thinking, but you give that keynote and then, yeah, there's, mm-hmm. if there's no follow up, and I've been at conferences where you've given a keynote and then maybe that's it, but some of yep. the other ones, you have some follow-up sessions, and I, I love sitting in on those follow-up sessions because really that's where some great conversation and great mm-hmm. growth happens. And you say it's um, not just you, and it's really not just you. You're growing, but also the participants are growing, and mm-hmm. it really, it's really powerful stuff. And really, I think, I think that speaks to something we want in our classrooms too. If you are just stopping with what you do in terms of lecture and there's no conversation. Um, I think that's an issue. And now as me as a teacher, uh, I'm not someone who sits up and lectures a lot. And I'm not someone who's going to, who doesn't do a great job at facilitating large group discussion. Mm -hmm. But I think the great thing I love about technology is that the ability to have those conversations digitally with my students. Each platform offers something different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Twitter, it, it limits you to a certain number of characters. You know, Instagram is very much picture based. Facebook, you can kind of, it's kind of like the mix of two, right? You can throw in pictures, videos quite easily with as much text as you want. So I'd say, you know, find the platform that kind of fits with you best and then just start connecting. Like the people that you follow, people that you, that, that you read, uh, you know, like for you, you for example, if, if I, I, you know, I love your work, so start diving into who you follow or, you know, and just start, start, start small, like, or, and talk to other people that are already connected. One of the things that I I just instituted recently is, um, you know, our our district has, has been kind of flexing a little bit on, do we hold kids accountable to due dates or do we penalize them if things come in late or do we let them rewrite, redo? Um, And I just found that giving them a really, really like, clear guidelines makes Mm -hmm. a difference. And so I've started this deal where if they turn it in on time, um, they have an entire week to make any corrections or changes based on my feedback to improve their grade without any kind of penalty at all. It's just Mm -hmm. a complete replacement grade. And if they don't turn it in on time, uh, they forfeit that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it has really driven, um, I I just surveyed my kids at the end of term three, about two weeks ago, um, asked them to give advice to the incoming fourth term kids. And the overwhelming Mm. um, advice was turn things in on time, take advantage, take advantage of the feedback and the opportunity to fix things. Um, and, And I don't know that I would have seen that in a prior class if I didn't have that policy. 